This episode is brought to you by TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com is your all access to culture. Check out cultural merchandise like leggings, hats, mini boxing gloves and bags. Also t-shirts like hip-hop, nature, rock bands, reggae and dark fantasy. Fast shipping worldwide. That's TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com Now let's check out this episode. You brought up this name again, Papa Sat. I know yes. two songs that you guys recorded was um, Legal Rights and Wrong Table Talk. How did those songs come around? Well, I mean, during that time, doing my thing, and, you know, Papa Sam say, you know, saw me doing my thing and stuff. And um, then he came, Papa Sam, you know, Papa Sam was doing his thing, and I was doing my thing too. And, uh, and the idea came up because we were, I mean, we were friends. We grew up, you know, from we were kids. So it's like him say, no, we need to do something together. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to do something together. And then the first song we do was, um, I think it was, man of, um, which one? Legal rights, man of a right. So man of a right, so if you don't hurt me. Yeah. And he was at, um, I remember he called me the day he was at creation because he was at creation during during that time DJ and creation son and he called me and said i have this idea you know for me and me if you do and first of all when both of us wrote it it was papa son idea i came up with the idea and everything and you know mm-hmm. and then we start djing at the on sound system and i mash up the place okay and i mash up the place and then now uh during that time who who i was I started doing my little record in that time, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I think Gussie, yeah, Gussie Clark said he would like us to do a combination. Mm-hmm. So there goes again, me and son and a couple of our friends was hanging out at this house and he came up with the, Papa Son again, came up with the idea and wrote the song around. A lot of friends, it was like, it was like a stage show because, you know, I mean, everybody was participating in it. Because when Papa son come with his line, then we come with my one and, you know, we line them off a hat. So we get the forward right there and then, you know, so, yeah. So, so we know that song would, would, would have a, you know, a forever life, lifespan to it because it was real, you know, it was a real, you know, vibe, you know, with, with other people around us. It wasn't just two of us sitting there you know writing it you know there were other people around giving us you know approval you know from there because i think legal rights was recorded for the technique label yes legal rights at the time yeah because you know um techniques was the label that was going on at the time winston riley yeah but i remember a record before that with winston riley okay yeah um Junior Ranks was the person who uh, took me to Winston Riley to record one night. And um, that's when I did the song, Some Fire Lover, that mm. with, with myself and Opton James. I think Winston, yeah, Winston Riley already um, Opton James did the song. So I was there waiting mm-hmm. for the whole night, waiting to voice. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I don't even know what I was going to voice or whatever. <laughs> I was just there sitting, you know, me and Junior Ranks as my friend and and then um he played the song and said you know find some lyrics to this mm-hmm. you know and the rest is history just going to the, the 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 recording booth and that was it if you notice that in the song i called junior ranks name a lot of people thought it was junior ranks did the song okay. you know yeah because yeah. she was there she was the one who you know took me to the studio you mm-hmm. know so that's the first time i really record for for Winston Riley, you know, techniques. Okay, so it was two songs that you recorded or it was two hits that actually came out of the techniques label? Two hits. The two songs that I did for Winston Riley was two hits. The one mm. with me and Opton James and the one with me and Papa Sad. Mm. You know? Yeah. At the time and you know Tiger and Anthony Malvo had that song on the same rhythm too. Mm-hmm. And so it's like we were wow with Tiger and Malvo song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, the juggling that was really hot. Yeah. yeah, man, I think 
Yeah, Tiger, uh, Tiger and Malva song was the one. I think they first hold, hold the number one spot before mm -hmm. us. Yeah, when their song came up, then because me and Papa son was performing it, you know, at mm -hmm. all the stage show them and dance and I mash up the place. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. Crazy because I know which one has the music video. Is it legal rights or round table talk has the music? Round video? table talk have the music video. Round table and talk. That's Opa the one. Oh, I Ladies, you say you are this. Mind you this trial the relationship. Oh, you are this. Ladies, you say you are this. Yeah, uh, we had that as a part two. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the one that Shelly Thunder is actually in that music video there too. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the bubble has passed me. You know, I know a lot of people are supposed to tell about the bubble has passed me. Mm -hmm. The time that the bubble has passed me was the artist passed in at the dance hall. Anyway, Papa mm -hmm. Salah Lady G there in a Jamaica where them can do them there that support us. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times would San come over to Black Scorpio or a lot of times you would go over to Creation and DJ? Mostly I would go over to Creation mm -hmm. because Papa Son was like Creation. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. So was son lecturer was over there too. It was a couple of them that was over there doing their things at that time there. Yeah, man, lecturer was there at the time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like a household DJ there, you know. I used to just pass through, you know. Mm -hmm. I used to just pass through time after time, mm -hmm. you know, when some dancer go on. But Scorpio was really my my song officially. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Did you ever, because another big um Spanish tongue song would have been um, Stereo One. Did you ever DJ Stereo One? No, no, no. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. No, Stereo One. Maybe I might go to one of the dances, but um I can't recall any, you know, any dance mm -hmm. that I really go go to on Stereo One, yeah. Most times there. And another big song, since you brought up his name, Gussie Clark, was um, Rumors. All right. Yes, yes. How did you come up with that? Because it was only the other day I was realizing that you and Greg Razax are both talking about rumors. So who had the rumor song first? Well, this whole rumors idea was like, I think it was Mikey Bennett. Mm -hmm. Because Mikey Bennett was the musical director for Gussie Club. So he was the one who used to, you know, help to write some of the songs and for, for artists at that time. And mm -hmm. he was the musical arranger, you know? So when I... When I went to, when, when, when Gussie sent a call me and I went down to Sliper, because, uh, you know, every artist, we used to hang out at Gemini Club every day. Nobody never have any cell phone or whatever. But Gemini Club, you know, Sassafras did have an office phone. So, like, we, we used to give people the office phone. Hey, or if you want to find an artist, mm -hmm. just go to Gemini Club and you find them. So I was there one day and um, I don't remember who Gussie sent to call me, but it's, Gussie sent the call me and I went down to the studio and and he started playing the rumors rhythm mm -hmm. and um I had the song no care me name no spread no rumor show me no respect you know a DJ no I think I had just the lyrics first I had, mm -hmm. sorry I had the lyrics first this is a fact may I fake confess to each and every woman man for due respect the two will just up in the latest salary of fact right now I don't even remember what the chorus was like because that whole lyrics came about at the time when, you know, the the whole heap of derogatory lyrics came about woman and the whole part, me and put up your hand and me and, yeah. and all of them kind of lyrics around the place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was a time for it. So as a female now, I say, you know what? They're gonna take a stand and make me feel, you know, say something positive, you know, F for the ladies, for the woman them. So um when I went there and I start DJing the lyrics and the rhythm. As I said, I don't remember the punchline that I had before. Start DJing. Um, um, Mikey Bennett was the one who said, Oh, about, you know, sing this as the punchline. I can't remember my name, let's spread the room and show me enough respect, you know, and that's how that really come about. Because I sing that, no care my name, let's spread the room and give me enough respect so till my throat get dry. Mikey <laughs> Bennett said, <laughs> Mikey Bennett, all right. Take a break. Go drink some water. I'll come back. <laughs> yeah. I was kind of like a bit upset. I'm like, oh, gosh, just singing this whole thing over, 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 over. You know what I mean? But it was worthwhile, you know? Yeah, that song was written 
with with my friend um in spanish town to de la vega city because so much talented people came from my community you know this youth name um we call him dodo joseph yeah joseph jackson he was my neighbor okay. you know he was my neighbor so yeah we used to always like go down to the river because there's a Raya Cobra River close by De La Vega City. So we used to always go down to the Raya Cobra River and so we have to write lyrics, you know, because Papa San and the man will set the trend with the writing lyrics. And I always I write, walk with them lyrics, book and thing, you know. So we say, yeah. So if if you want to be an artist at that time, you have to have your lyrics book and you have to write your lyrics them. So yeah, we went to the river that day and, and, and I said, you know, I want to write something that, um, to uplift the females, you know, some, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's the lyrics that came about. Even the part that, um, when I said, we come up on the street, the man them say, we look fresh. Mm -hmm. That was one of my brethren. Who, he was in the water swimming. <laughs> and then he came up fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, you know, i put that to that lyrics. Yeah. So, you know, crazy. Yeah. Everything does, that's natural, you know? <laughs> and what did that do for your career now at that time having that monster hit on your hand well enough respect was the song that really put me on the music on the recording musical map at that time because at that time i didn't do the, the combination with papa san yet okay for gussie yeah, yeah we didn't do the combination for, with papa san for gussie yet so yeah that enough respect does take off and yeah, I start traveling and, you know, start doing a lot of shows, you know, the big shows, them like Reggae Sun Splash at the time and, yeah, and Sting and all them shows. So, yeah, enough respect really put me on the record and musical map, yeah. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusica.com.